All right, let's get in those headlines now with Michael McLaren, host of Weekends on 2GB. Michael, as always, great to have you here on a Thursday. We'll start Thanks, with the uh, Aussie Post. I grew up in the bush in the Mallee in Victoria and I know a lot of country people will watch this review with a bit of trepidation because about the only decent service still in town is Australia Post, either a, an Australia Post branded post office or an LPO, a licensed post office in and around uh, another business. It looks like everything's on the table. It's a sweeping review, the Minister says. We know after businesses stopped sending mail and used email, they took a, a significant hit but the parcel business is doing well. It'll only be an eight-week consultation. That tells me, I have to say, that they already know what they want to do, and that's the concern. I think the reputational regard that people hold Aussie Post in is still very high, but we're going to see some big changes here, I think. I suspect we will, and Peter, to be honest, I think maybe we have to. I, I, I think the problem here lies in that the government don't really know what they want Australia Post to be. Um, Australia Post is trying to compete in a rather strange situation. It has a monopoly on the dwindling letters business, which it would rather not have. But under its charter, I'm led to believe it's obliged to continue with it. At the That's same right. time, as you say, That's right. they're, they're competing in this parcel business and doing reasonably well. But their competitors in that business don't have the lead in the saddlebags, as it were, of the postal business. So it's a strange situation. And equally, as I said, I'm not sure the government really know, well, it goes back a long time, governments, I don't think, really know what they want of Australia Post, what they want it to be, what it's about, what's its purpose. Uh, on the one hand, they seem to want it to be able to not just wipe its face, but make a profit. And on the other hand, they keep in its charter obvious loss-making entities like the letters business. So... Maybe it's the case that, at the end of the day, if they want letters still delivered two, three, whatever days a week, the government's just going to have to kick the tin. Well, I mean, this is what Australians pay their taxes for, and you're right to point yeah. out the charter. It's a bit like telephones. When we all had a landline uh, in our home, landlines weren't commercially viable in country areas, particularly remote areas, but, but they were cross-subsidised by the volumes of people in urban areas who, you know, had a phone and it made commercial sense. I and mean, this is what yeah. the Constitution says, communication services belong to all Australians and are the responsibility of the Commonwealth. I mean, this is where I want to see the government put its attention and not on these class war fights with super, but we'll see what yeah. happens. As I said, I know country people will watch this closely. 